On today's Kickstarter critique, I watch as Cryptozoic launches Stephen Rhodes games and tries to balance the thin line between appealing to the mass market and appealing to the hobby market. Do they succeed? Let's talk about it. What does that even mean, Bowers? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different Kickstarter board game every time and give me my thoughts on how it's being ran. And today, I was just scrolling through Kickstarter and one in particular caught my eye, which was Stephen Rhodes Game. So first and foremost, that's a really unique name. A three-pack of games featuring Stephen Rhodes' unique style of nostalgia with a twist of... I don't even know. But it's also from Cryptozoic, who's like a, a pretty large company. So it's interesting to see them on here. And I'm excited to see. Wow, look at that artwork. Oh my gosh. I'm going to guess Stephen Rhodes is the artist here. So first thing I want to say is this is a really interesting spin on the Kickstarter because this is not, I think, aimed at necessarily board gamers as much as it is Stephen Rhodes fans. So it's just interesting to see them take that approach to the Kickstarter and, and the process. But let's check out this video. I bet it's going to blow my... I bet it's going to be a great video. Cryptozoic, they're a good company. Like, they know what they're doing. Howdy ho, kids! Say, who likes to play games? We do! Well, you're in luck, because I got some dynamite games for you. Like, let's summon demons. <laughs> right on, motherfucker! <laughs> or don't talk to strangers. <laughs> Far out! And don't forget, let's dig for treasure. Damn, bitch, this shit is cool! <laughs> That's right, dynamite games are fun for the entire family. Who wants to join little Rotten Tommy and Sweet Susie in the summoning circle? Because you're going to collect souls at the roll of the dice and swap those souls to summon some crazy demons. First player to three demons wins the game and eternal damnation. <laughs> Ranger danger, Timmy! That's right, it's time to clench those cheeks and get off the streets! And don't talk to strangers! The strategy board game that pits you against some pesky ETs! Draw cards and move your pals around the board as you try and score points! You made it to the school dance! But avoid those aliens or you could be in big trouble! Grab your shovel and toss your moral compass, Billy! Cause last, but not dynamite least, is Let's Dig for Treasure! The push your luck card game that digs a hole with the whole family, dead or alive. Sorry, Grandma. La, la. Players take turns digging cards off one of the three stacks. Stop any time and score your points or press your luck. But hit a skeleton and your turn's over and you lose any card you've drawn that turn. That's right, an entire game collection inspired by the art of Stephen Rhodes, right at your fingertips. And remember, dynamite games are super easy to learn, but challenging for even the most experienced gamer. Truly fun for the whole family. All right, so I loved everything about that they knew what kind of games they have. And these are, what you know, as, sometimes as the hobby game market, we say things are gateway games. But honestly, like, we have a very, no, these look to be gateway games. Like, these look like actual gateway games. I, I think, like, I've seen people say, like, Small World's a gateway game. Like, no, that's not a gateway game. You know, heck, Pandemic at its core can be very confusing to some people. And... I think they knew that these were not games that were generally going to wow heavier gamers. You know, like, this is not probably something that's going to be seen at most people's game nights unless it's like a lightweight filler type situation. And so they decided, we're not going to go for that crowd as hard. We're going to go for this whole other crowd, which is Stephen Rhodes fans, which chances are most of them are in that category of you don't, they, they don't like complicated games. And so they went out of their way to really make it so that these games looked simple, super easy to learn, 10 minutes or less. Yeah, first thing, first thing, super easy to learn, 10 minutes or less. They know who they're going for. So good on there. Look at these pictures. <laughs> That's great. Hidden depth, radical replayability. There we go. Now they're like, oh, but no, 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 don't, don't leave, hobby game fans. There's depth and <laughs> hidden depth. I love how they put that. Like, I, I oh, no, no. Hey, you Stephen Rhodes fans who like board games, these ones got a little extra oomph. And so I like the fact they included that. Stephen Rhodes is a graphics artist and illustrator best known for his offbeat reimagining of children's activity books from the 70s and 80s. Okay, very cool. Three games. Brief overview of each game. 120 cards. And I see 120 cards. And 
as I'm trying to imagine this from like an Uno chess Monopoly perspective. When I see 120 cards, I say, wow, that's a lot of cards. You know, it's more than two decks of cards. But when I look at it from a hobby game perspective, it's the opposite question where it's like, I don't expect that much out of this game. And I say, 120 cards, that's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> and I think that's really interesting. Like, they're straddling this tightrope of trying to appeal to both audiences. And so far, I feel they're doing a very good job of it. In the funkiest, fresh, push your luck experience out there. So we got a press your luck game. Let's summon demons. Uh, shuffle up the demon deck and the block deck. I don't know what kind of game this is. Honestly, I don't, I don't feel like people are going to be analyzing this too terribly much because I feel like at this point you're probably sold or you're not sold. But it's nice that it's all here at the start of the game. This one, <laughs> the new stepdad card. Yeah, so this looks like a very simple light game. Uh, move two spaces. Yeah, that sort of thing. Back all three games. And yes, I like this. They got the nice box because a lot of people, a lot of people are going to have this as something displayed. They may never even play it. But if it has that at display... I like so I like how they did this. I like how they did this display an awful lot. Kickstarter exclusives. Ooh, oh my gosh! So I wonder how many of the of the backers. I wish you. I wish I could see the numbers. Like how many backers from this are new Kickstarter users, and how many of the, this is going to be like their first taste of stretch goals. Let's dig for. Okay, so this is going to be special cards, special things in the games. Stretch goals. Oh, okay. So they're, they're showing off. They got a whole bunch of stretch goals. Haven't hit it yet. But the fact that they're showing off nine, and I believe, I, I think they're color coordinated, so they're going to be adding new things to the specific games, tells me, okay, that, that's going to start getting me excited. And I think if they have these as like those micro stretch goals, like every five or $5,000 or something like that, oh boy, howdy, this could be a rocket ship ready to blow. We still have not looked at the price though. But I, I'm judging by the fact that they've already made 20 plus thousand dollars on these three games. That should not be an issue. We expect the game to start shipping in June 2021, so around uh, Origins uh, and Gen Con. It is English only, and we're shipping worldwide in a partnership with Quartermaster Logistics. This is all nice. This is all good. Uh, as as a, a person who's in the know about those companies, it's like, oh, that's cool. Good. Thank you for telling me that. This is not our first rodeo. Yeah, seven created, 30 backed. Uh, okay, yeah. So there's no videos. Don't like that, but Cryptozoic, once again, knows who they're going for. One copy of Let's Dig for Treasure. Nobody's, nobody's getting these things separate. <laughs> 7, 13, and 2. 22 people were like, I just want that one. That, no, that's not the overwhelming majority of people. Uh, double trouble option. What? Yeah, nobody wants 2. Who wants 2? <laughs> nobody wants 2. 3 backers, 7 backers. Give me the big one. 1 backer. There we go. 298 slipcase exclusive. All 3 games. $50.00. How much is the shipping? It didn't actually tell me, which I don't like. Not the biggest fan of that, but I understand it because of just the uncertainty with everything. So, but you know, realistically, we're probably looking at like $15 to $20. So you're looking at $70, and I think if you're a fan of the artist, $70, you go, okay, you know, this is some, it could be something that I have displayed. Not to mention, it will also be something that I can play as well. Uh, and I want to support the artist. And, and a lot of people are going to back it just immediately because of that. On the gamer perspective, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a pretty big asking. 70 bucks for, for these three games I think is going to be a bit of an asking price. And I bet you a lot of these backers are, uh, are, are newer people. So I'm very curious. It's comments. Will it be possible to upgrade pledges in the pledge manager? My English is not so... So I bought your game without hesitation. It looks awesome. Can we dream of a French version or no luck? Oh, uh, I'm literally reading this campaign page while wearing my Let's Summon Demon shirts. It must be a sign. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I bet a lot of these people are, 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 are relatively newer to Kickstarter. I, I, I just have a feeling that this is the kind of cross-promotional thing. And this is great. This is great from, from uh, Cryptozoic's perspective. You know, teaming up with, with some... Because this is totally different. I can't think of anything else really like this in the board game spectrum right now. So I think it's a really great idea. So in the end, Steven Rhodes Games already at 20,000 uh, of the 25,000 they will need. I think this one is going to see a big boom as more and more and more people hear about it with those stretch goals. I can see this one. Uh, I think it's going to get 100. I think it'll go 100. You know, I just, I, I think by, by putting out such a wide net, I think, but then again, I don't know how popular Steven Rhodes is now that I mentioned that. Uh, but anyhow. There you go. That is today's Kickstarter critique. Oh, actually, let's let's see if they're on. Ooh, let's see if they're on Board Game Geek. I'm sure they are. 
Let's summon demons. No. No, they're not. Owie. Owie. Stephen Rhodes. Maybe is it, is it one? Stephen Rhodes. No. I can't spell. Stephen Rhodes. Nope. Okay. Try one more. Uh, one more without... Let's dig for treasure. We'll just look dig for treasure. So that is very surprising. That is a... Oh. That is not surprising that I can't spell treasure. Jesus Christ. The, what, what I'm trying to get here is if this... It's not. I don't believe that this is on Board Game Geek. That is a, a move that I don't think is very wise for Cryptozoic to not have it on there. Just because... Um, just because you're going to get more people interested in the games before they launch. Yeah, no, this is not on here. Because it would give me with that Dig for Treasure correctly spelled. So, really surprised that they should get this on Board Game Geek. Because who's to say a bunch of Steven Rowe? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just always, you should always be on Board Game Geek before you launch a Kickstarter. Because you have, you know, millions of people that might potentially see it there and I think that's that's an interesting choice. But there you go. That is Stephen Rhodes Games currently on Kickstarter. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. And if you're interested in having a fiber done on your Kickstarter, click on that link down below. And uh, also, if you're interested in this, check out the Kickstarter link down below. Tell them Bowers Games, Warner sent you. And to get on board, Game Geek. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.